please clarify what would be considered a harmful social norm. Okay, so if you want to get really technical, a social norm, many people think a, um, a cultural practice is a social norm. In the field of social and behavior change, there's a, a kind of specific understanding of what a social norm is. I don't know if I can simply explain. Like a cultural practice would be, or a, a social practice would be something like, that could be harmful is maybe littering. You know, like too many of us as Jamaicans, too easy to throw something in a day, you know, gully or whatever, plastic. That, that is a, um, it's just a practice that we do, it's a bad habit and that's harmful, you know, because it goes back, we drink it and we get sick. Um, but that's not a social norm, um, as we know it in social and behavior change um, practice. A s harmful social norm is one where there are social expectations that even when you know or you have the intention not to do it, you do it because of the expectations of the so society around you. So let's take something like male parenting, male caregiving. Um, in so many societies, less so I think in Jamaica actually, because I think there's more of a social norm here for fathers to do childcare. But in some societies, I've been in Egypt for example, where it is looked down upon for a man to like change a, a nappy or a, you know, um, to care for a child in that way. So that would be a I would say a harmful social norm, not necessarily physically, but just emotionally, that it, it's good if, as I said before, both parents are caring for children equally and spending time with them and um, taking care of their basic needs as well as their psychological needs. So um, that would be a, a harmful social norm where there's an expectation, a social expectation that causes you not to do something. Whereas in throwing litter in a gully is not um, a social expectation. You don't, um, people don't expect you to do it or not to do it. It's, it's, it's wrong and it's bad and it's harmful, but it's not held in place because of a social expectation. Another example would be um, what is called female genital mutilation, which is basically cutting um, the genitalia of women, um, especially young women that is considered a harmful practice. It is. Um, it causes profuse bleeding in, in pregnancy and childbirth. Um, it can be very harmful. It causes infection. Um, so many things physically and also emotionally for um, children. But in many societies, in Somalia, there are some uh, places where the female gentle mutilation or female gentle cutting rate is like up to 90, 95% in a particular community. That's because if you are not um, being caught, it's very unusual that you would find um, someone who will m want to marry you. So that's a social expectation. And I always tell a story about a nurse who I worked with in um, Ethiopia, who was working with UNICEF to promote the stopping of female genital mutilation. And you know, it was one time um, during the cutting season, they call it, that um, she, she was not around and we, we, we asked after her and we f heard after that she had gone across the border to have three of her girl children cut. This is the same nurse that is promoting the prevention of FGM. And so I think that example is the most clear way of saying that she knows it's wrong. She knows the dangers to her child, but because she wants her girl children to be married in her society, she's gonna have them cut. That's a, that's a harmful social norm. When um, the, the, penal the rewards or the penalties for doing a practice or not doing it is held in place because of social expectations. I think it's a hard time to live in, you know. Um, COVID for sure has been a, a life-changing experience um, in a quick time where we've seen the world turn upside down, literally. Um, it's been a hard time for so many of us, the family, the community to keep up for because um, things are just not the same. There's um, on top of the challenges that were already there, you know, how have a whole another mountain to climb. I mean, even the space that we built to be um, 
you know, a culture, a place for cultural works. We, we haven't been able to manifest it in the way that we would want. Um, but, you know, um, having lived the life that I have, um, you know, I think it's important that we maintain the positivity um, and gravitate to those who have similar minds. You, know, you can get bogged down a lot with um, a lot of hate, people who hate. People hate people who are either trying to be successful or who are, are successful or, you know, and I think we who have been able to maybe live a happier life or have had a more privileged life have to somehow um, give with positivity and gravitate amongst people who are positive and be still willing to um, push towards that vision, you know, because it's easier to just give up. It's easier not to contribute because you've been burnt. It, it's very easy not to do the things you know that would make the world a better place. Um, but I think it's important and, you know, if not we, then who? That's how I look at it. You know, it's um, even within Rastafari, I, I think I see that a lot where there are many who have contributed, who, um, you know, things, um, people are around to say negative things or carry them down. And it's, it's unfortunate because people have been fighting the good fight for a long while. But I think that um, for the vision, for the, for the next generation, that's what we have to do it for. It's not even maybe about our lives or what we can achieve for ourselves in this life. But, you know, once you have children and grandchildren, you realize that, um, you know, this thing is, this thing of life is much bigger than just you. And, you know, you owe it to the earth, you owe it to the liberty to really um, aspire to something that elevates humankind. Well, them 